How are you doing, Fatima and Iban? Good. Alhamdulillah. So today we will going to finish, hopefully, inshallah, Sunnah Acts of Prayer. Do you remember? We started with etiquettes of using restroom, and then how to do wudu, and then things which invalidate wudu or break the wudu, yeah. and then we started the obligatory acts of the prayer. And now, Alhamdulillah, we are about to finish our Sunnah or recommended acts of prayer. Just if, just in case if you if you forgot, if if you miss any of those obligatory acts which we discussed previously, then your prayer is not accepted, right? Yeah. But if you miss any of these acts, then your prayer will be accepted, but you won't get that much reward which you are supposed to get. So if you forgot to say thana. What is Thana? Subhanakallahumma wa bi? Wa tabara kasmuka wa ta'ala? If you forgot to say any of these, your prayer will be accepted because it's not obligatory, but you won't get that much reward. Do you want to miss the reward? No. So you have to recite it, right? Um, so we, we, we covered saying Thana, then reading A'udhu Billah, then reading Bismillah. And then another recommended act is that uh, saying takbir except the opening takbir. Why? Because no, opening takbir is obligatory. obligatory. Good job, Iban. Opening takbir is? Obligatory. Great. The rest of the takbir is recommended. Then going into the ruku, saying Subhana Rabbi Al Azim, we already covered last time, Subhana Rabbi Al Azim. Then saying Sani Allah Rabbana, Hamidah Rabbana, We already discussed this last time. Now we are actually about to go into the sajda so just change the sequence this should come actually above then dua between the sajda but we'll start with the uh, tasbih in sajda and that is this when you are going into the sajda doing sajda is it obligatory or recommended raise your hand uh, recommended doing sajda doing sajda is obligatory obligatory reading subhana rabbi al a'la fatima Reading Subhan Rabbi Al-Ala during Sajda, is it obligatory or recommended? Recommended. Good job. So now answer my question. If you are doing Sajda, but if you didn't read this, is your Salah accepted Fatima? Yes. yes. Why? But you won't get more yes, you won't get that much reward, but your Salah is accepted and you don't have to repeat the prayer. Why? Because it's recommended. Good job. Hibban, if you miss Sajda, you went into the ruku and then you started your second ruku. You didn't do sajda. Is your prayer accepted? No. Good job. Why? Because you sajda is obligatory. Give me a high five. I can't have obligatory. Fatima. Good job. Okay, let's, let's move on. Now, this is the dua which we have to recite in sajda. Subhana. Rabbi al -ala. You guys know this, mashallah. Yeah. Okay, it means. Glory be to my master. You are awesome, O oh my master, O oh my Allah. That's what it means. The Al A'la, the Most High. Who, where is Allah? Hi. The Most High. Okay, now there is one very important thing. What? When you are doing sajda, where are you? Uh, down, down. The most down, right? You cannot go further down than that, right? Yeah. Your face, which is usually the top part of, the high part of your body, body usually that is at the lowest. And when you are doing such that, when your face is at the lowest, you are saying, Allah, you are the most high. Can you say in English, Fatima? It, 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 it English? I thought it's in Urdu. It looks like we are talking, Alamia is in front of us in Ria. Absolutely. 
But we have to imagine that we are looking at Allah and if that's not possible with our Iman, we have to see that Allah is looking at us all the time. Right? This is the highest level of excellence which we can achieve. That at least Allah, we can imagine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking at us all the time, right? Yes. Good job, mashallah. So glory be to my master, the most high. So this is what we have to decide in? Sajda. That's clear, mashallah. Let's, let's move on. Um, now, when you complete your one sajda and you, stay, you sit before you will go for the second sajda, it's also recommended at that between two sajda to recite this dua. What is it? Allahumma gfirli. Read it. Allahumma gfirli. Read Allahumma Allahumma gfirli. Allahumma gfirli. Or you can say Rabbi gfirli. Rabbi gfirli. Either way is fine. Oh Allah, please forgive me. Say Ameen. Ameen. Good job. If you didn't, Hibban, if you didn't pray this dua, if you didn't recite this dua between two sajda, is your prayer accepted? Yes. Good job, because it's recommended. Yeah. But will you get the reward? No. Good job. Okay. You are done with two sajda? Yes. Let's say you are finishing your salah. When you are sitting in tashahud, what is the first thing you have to read? Uh, at tahiyyat. Good job. At tahiyyat. At tahiyyat is uh, recommended or obligatory? Obligatory. Good job. Then? Allah Allah then salawat on Prophet Muhammad Allah sallallahu Allah alayhi wa sallam. Okay. Salawat. Salutations on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is it obligatory or recommended? So some scholars say it's obligatory, some say it's recommended. recommended. We, 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 we cover it in the obligatory acts, right? Yeah. Because obviously we love our Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then, before finishing your salah, Fatima, yeah. before finishing your salah, you have to read one dua, whatever you like. Rasulullah advises us few duas. I'll mention one dua from the Quran, but you can read whatever dua you want to ask before you would say salam. And this has to be after salutations of Prophet Muhammad. So you will recite at tahiyyat then you will recite Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, and then you will going to read this dua. Is it clear? Is it clear? Yes. Okay, can you read with me? Rabbana. Rabbana. Atina. Atina. Fid dunya. Fid dunya. Hasana, Hasana, wa fil akhirati, wa fil akhirati, Hasana, Hasana, wa qina, wa qina, adab al-nar. Adab al-nar. Good. Yeah. This one is the Quran. This is the Bakra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is beautiful dua. So this dua is, O Allah. O Allah. Rabbana means O Allah, O my Master. Atina. Atina. Give me or give us. Give what? Fi dunya hasana. Give me success in this world. Give me success in, in this, this world. Wa fil akhirati hasana. Wa fil akhirati hasana. And give me success in hereafter. Hereafter. Dear judgment. Wa qina azab al nar and protect us from hellfire. Amin. Amin. Okay, do you know the meaning of this dua? You are asking Allah, oh Allah, I don't only need Jannah, that's what I need, but Jannah will come in Akhirah or in this world, Iqbal? Akhirah. In Day of Judgment. Here also, I need to be successful. I need to work hard, I need to study hard, I need to find a good job, I need to help others, I need to give charity to poor, I need to help my family members, I need to help my community members, and I need to be a good... I need to be a good Muslim. individual, good Muslim. Is that clear? Good human being. Is that clear? Yeah. I should benefit the people surrounding me as much as I can. This yeah. is successful people in this dunya. So make me successful. And in Akhirah, give me Jannah. So when you are asking, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana, it means Allah, make me successful in this dunya. Give me halal money. Give me a good amount of money so I can help people at the same time make me beneficial for the people so I can benefit the people and at the same time make me someone who can earn Jannah so I can get success in Akhir also is that clear? Yeah. yeah. And Azab uh, al Oh Allah please protect us from fire. Abba, what do you mean? Allah means Jannah. Abba, tell me. 
You tell me. Then I begin from the heaven and I ate you. Very important question. So, why Allah punishes you sometimes? Allah loves to punish you? No. Okay, Fatima asked me an important question. Fatima asked me a question that does Allah, Allah likes to throw everyone in hell? And I said no, because Allah loves us, we know this, right? Then Fatima is asking me why Allah created hell then? It's, it's a very important question. Now, uh, Fatima, my question to you is, when Abba punishes you, for whatever punishment, does Abba love to punish you? No. But why Abba punishes you then if no, Abba does love to punish learn. you? Huh? So, could not do so it. you could learn, right? And you could not do bad things, right? But, um, yeah. but still Abba loves you. Abba is going to give you reward when you're going to do good things. But when you're consistently doing bad things, especially harming other, harming your siblings, bullying your siblings, so Abba is going to eventually say, Fatima, enough is enough, now I'll give you punishment, right? Yeah. If Allah would have only created Jannah and not hell, then how so people would have, it. absolutely, people would have done so many bad things. They are already doing bad things, but they would have increased in bad things. And eventually there is no way, no fear of the punishment. At least by making Jannah and hell. Now we have this fear that if you will do bad things, you will go to hell. hell. And if you will do good things, you will go to Jannah. So basically, we have a hope and we have a fear. Hope of Jannah. Fear of, of hell. hell. This will go into balance our life of doing good deeds and avoiding bad, bad deeds. deeds. Is it clear? Yeah. yeah. Good. That's a very good question. Okay. Uh, so we will end here, inshallah. And we're going to continue next time with the du'as after salah. Is that clear? Inshallah. Is perfect view? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum.